March is Women's History Month, and it's all about celebrating women who have played a vital role in history. And today, we're here with four influential women who have forged successful careers in athletics and are now impacting the lives of the next generation. So without further ado, let's meet these lady textures. First, we'll meet the newest member of our staff, Amber. This fall will be your first at Tech as the head volleyball coach, and you were a player yourself at the University of Florida. You had five SEC championships, including a redshirt season, right? Yes. And then a national championship game appearance. Yes, my freshman year. Okay, and then you were even selected to represent the entire program, right? Your senior year at a NCAA leadership conference, mm -hmm. right? Yes, it was. Very cool. And then Brooke, it's no secret, you were an outstanding athlete here at Tech. <laughs> with four NCAA tournament appearances, and two of those were Elite Eights, and then a Final Four as well. And then you even led the NCAA in free throw percentage, if that's right. Very cool, what was that percentage? Uh, in the 90s, somewhere like that. Wow, and then, I'm not sure if you're aware, but you're not the only college basketball player in the room, Amanda. You had a season at Oral Roberts, your freshman year playing basketball and then made the switch to tennis at Northeastern, right, right where you um, had two national tournament appearances and then your senior season and undefeated mark. Um, so sitting with some successful ladies here. Um, and thank you all so much for coming up. So you all have balanced academic excellence and a championship mindset while being leaders on campuses and on your teams. How are y'all able to balance all of that, and how are you able to reflect that to your players? You know, when you operate with the understanding that it's a privilege to be able to compete here, and knowing that um, that there have been a lot of people before us that kind of set the stage and allowed for this to happen, it makes a really big deal and puts a big impact on you when you know that you are getting to have these incredible opportunities as far as the places you get to travel and the um, experiences you get to have and the memories you get to make with your teammates. It's definitely something that makes you want to get up in the morning at 6 a.m. and get it, go to class all day and come back to practice and train and you're able to push through those challenges because you know not everyone gets to do it for one and that it's memories that will last for a lifetime. I think that's, um, you know, just to kind of piggyback on that, it's important that you understand after the fact. I think we all, you know, our coaches would always tell us, hey, we didn't have these opportunities. And you don't really fully understand that, I think, when you're in the moment. But I think our job now as leaders of our programs is to make sure that we emphasize that to our current students, that we, we had opportunities because of the people that came before us. You have opportunities because of those people. And it's important that we don't forget that in the fact, whether it's 30 years later, um, that the things that they're able to do, how they're able to travel the world and just let a game impact their lives so much. Not everybody before us had that and they fought long and hard for that. And it's been neat for, for myself at different universities to see and meet those women that, that had such a huge part in that um, transition and that transformation that Title IX created. And I think as a, a coach now, as a woman coach coaching women's teams, <laughs> It's really great that we can identify mm -hmm. what they're going through exactly because we were caught as college athletes as well. And sometimes I know that I didn't play for any women head coaches. And I think that's something that we can really bring to the table that's special for the women that we're coaching now and kind of explain to them like what you guys are saying. You know, they're having these different opportunities and, you know, people have worked very hard. What's the quote? Standing on the shoulders of giants. Mm -hmm. And seeing us go through that and knowing that we've done the same things, the same workouts, and been successful and have gotten to the point where we're at now is really impactful for them. Going off, you said standing on the shoulders of giants. Mary Kay, you were sort of one of those giants. You're very much a pioneer for women um, in sports now. You're the deputy athletic director and you have a few mm -hmm. other titles, right? <laughs> few other. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so your career really started right after Title IX was instated and you sort of saw that transformation. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it, um, you know, listening to these three, um, I mean, they, they are lucky and the uh, student athletes that we have today um, have incredible opportunities that, you know, that I wish I had had, but I didn't. But um, I did have the opportunity, though, to be one of the first 
and my first coaching job, um, it was starting the program because there had not been a program. And, and I think back to some of the, the things that happened. I remember uh, when I was a junior in college, they, um, Title IX, you know, had been around for a couple of years. They, a lot of the high schools were just adding programs. And so I was a health and physical education major. At that time, the men's and women's departments were separate. So they finally added a, what they called uh, techniques of coaching. That was the first coaching class in the women's department. So I signed up for it, and about two weeks in, um, I got in a, a big discussion with the professor because she said it was unethical to intentionally foul to get the ball back at the end of the game. And I could tell at that point that that was probably not the right class for me. <laughs> you know, one of the things that, that I think back and, and see that now people just take for granted, and that's good. I'm glad they, they're able to do that. You know, I think even to the uh, people that, um, you know, were there at the same time that I was, and there's just a lot of stories and a lot of history, and, and um, it's just come so far. It's just hard even to, um, you know, to believe the, the steps that we've made. You're a role model for myself and for these women um, and a lot of others in that, and who were some of y'all's role models, um, even as coaches and as players and just in general? I've spoken before in my first interview with Tech how Mary Wise, my college coach, was a huge role model for me. She was one of the first in our game who was a play, um, coaching at a prominent school, consistently getting her teams to Final Fours and getting to play in the national championship game. And I think getting to see her do that, knowing the battle she faced, I think just watching her battle through that and just raise an incredible family while doing it and proving that it can be done and kind of breaking all the stereotypes that tell us that we have to choose I think was huge for me. That was a big step, a big reason I decided to even come here, for instance. I played for a lot of great coaches growing up. Um, unfortunately, like I said before, I never really had a, a woman head coach, but there were many men head coaches in my life that have been, you know, really encouraging, really supportive of me and all my teammates. Um, my dad has been great. My mom, those are two huge role models for me. You know, giving me and my brother the confidence that we can go and do anything that we work hard for. Um, my AAU coach, when I was growing up, he would tell us about his daughter. He was so proud of her for going to play at um, SMS back in the day, now Missouri State. And that was like really inspirational for all of us when we were going up playing AAU because we didn't know a lot of people at that time in our lives that had gone on to full college scholarships for playing basketball. So it was kind of really it was a great inspiration even though I never met her. Him putting her kind of on a pedestal as a, someone we could look up to was really cool for us. I think um, growing up, you know, the exposure from a television standpoint and a media and marketing um, standpoint of promoting women mm -hmm. was just starting to really come to the forefront. I think for myself, you know, I didn't just look at female basketball players. Um, we looked at other athletes, whether it be soccer and the U.S. Women's National Team. I think, um, you know, when you early in my college career, I guess after my freshman year, it was, you know, Brandi Chastain and Mia Hamm and all of those. And just, the, I think, that summer in women's athletics was huge in the Olympics. And I think it really kind of exploded from a, um, a media standpoint. But for us growing up, we may not have been able to see I did just because I, you know, grew up wanting to be a lady texture and there's so many people in our program's history of, you know, Kim Mulkey and Jennifer White and, and you know, just all of those people coming from that era of they didn't have that media exposure. You know, I think the other thing that that I go back to for myself now as a coach is working for women that are moms mm -hmm. and that are able to show that you can be a mom, you can be a coach, you can lead a program, and you can do it all. I think it's a tremendous example for our, our young women that you're not limited to, I can only do this, mm -hmm. that you can do multiple things, and they're, they need to see us doing it well, and they need to see us failing, and to see the support that we have 
from our administration in order to do that. We can't be so focused on one thing that we aren't well-rounded and that we aren't impacting other people. And I think that that's a tremendous opportunity. And I had the great fortune of seeing Kim Mulkey have her kids around and watching them grow up. And, you know, little Kramer, who's now, you know, playing professional baseball, I have a picture of him cutting down the net with me to go to the, the oh, Final Four in L.A. And those are moments that you go, you know, you want your kids to experience that, but that was a huge deal to me. I completely agree. We talk a lot on our team about they're more than just wins and losses, and it's more than what you do on the court. It's mm -hmm. the people that they're becoming. And so, you know, building that culture of good character mm -hmm. and, you know, what can you, what's your value? What are you bringing? Maybe you're not performing at your best because you can't every single time, mm -hmm. but what's your value? Like, what are you taking away from this? It's going to help you later. It's really, really important, and I can, I know that's important at Louisiana Tech as a whole. I think one of the things that's made such a big difference mm -hmm. is um, the girls are starting so young now. Mm -hmm. You know, they're able to go to camps in the summer back when they're in grade school, and, and they're, uh, they had the opportunity to uh, to view role models and to um, you know to see what the possibilities are, and they they uh, they've just grown up knowing that the opportunities were there, right. and you know and the parents are uh, very encouraging and and getting in the, them in the right position, and they're able to look up to people like these three. I think just going back to all of that, representation is so important in. It's amazing me just thinking, even when I was growing up, we didn't see, it was starting to get on TV, but not very often. You know, you saw the Olympics was the, the main point that you got to see women competing in sport at a high level. So those were the people that we really grew to kind of idolize with that. And, you know, I'm looking at the, the uh, gymnastics team and all that, and that obviously couldn't be my sport. I learned very early. <laughs> I was way too big for that. Um, but, you know, those were my first volleyball players that I really started aspiring to, whether it was Tara Cross Battle or Daniel Scott and the likes and, you know, the Lisa Leslie's and all of that in basketball and getting to really see them was the first time and kind of the only time that I really saw that. And you look at now, you can always find a women's basketball game and you can find softball is on there so much, you know, in tennis and just you see all these great role models and it really does um, allow the younger generation and the younger kids to see that and say, I want to be her, you know, I want to be in her spot one day. So y'all kind of mentioned we've seen the growth of women even in television coverage, even in just the opportunity to play earlier or to put, have a women's college team at all. What excites y'all about the future of women in sports? I mean, like everyone said, it's an exciting time, mm -hmm. especially, I mean, I think this trend, uh, just everyone fighting for equality even mm -hmm. more now. Um, there are great leaders in tennis. I mean, I think tennis was kind of like one of the forerunners in this anyway, with Billie Jean King back in the, was it was in the 70s, I think? So Chris Everett. Yeah, mm -hmm. Chris Everett. Um, and now we have Venus and Serena. Venus is, I think, actually the one that got the Grand Slam prize money, even that for men and women. Mm -hmm. So I think we're on a great track. And I think the leaders that we do have in the spotlight now understand the importance of um, you know, the equality and pushing girls to be the best. You know, I think we've come so far, but I still think there's so far to go. Mm -hmm. And I do, I, I think we appreciate all of us and growing up, I can remember being in the backyard hitting a tennis ball up against the wall thinking, I'm gonna be Chris Everett. And you know, my sister was Martina, and so we were playing against <laughs> each other. Obviously tennis didn't work out for us, but. Um, I think it is those, you know, one, you know, one grand slam a month or, you know, throughout the summer of going, okay, we're going to get up and watch Wimbledon. Okay, we're going to watch the Women's Final Four. And, I, you know, growing up for me, volleyball wasn't even on, mm -hmm. you know, TV. So that was, you know, I just didn't experience that until later in life. And now we do have, you know, all the networks and our, the ability to watch games on our phone and all of those things. But I still think there's so far to go, and I think it's it, it should be lost on us now um, when we think about Mary Kay and all the people that paved the way, you know, back in the, you know, 70s for us to have these opportunities that we have to take that next step and say, okay, how do we move it forward even further and not be satisfied and just go, okay, we're here, we've made it, we've right. arrived. I think there's so many more avenues and impacts that we can have. And that's our responsibility as this generation to con continue to move it forward. Mm -hmm.
And that's one thing I think is really encouraging is knowing that even with all the strides that we've made over these past few decades, that people are still fighting and right. that people are still moving into uncharted territory. You look at, you know, the Becky Hammonds, who's, you know, obviously coaching an NBA team as a woman, that's just huge. And then you look at our women's soccer team, you know, fighting for their equal pay and making grounds in that. And just knowing that everyone, like you said, we know, yes, we've come a long way, but we're not there yet. And that there's still things, even you look at the media coverage um, of how, women are displayed, you know, and, and are we, we're emotional and all of that instead of just being passionate um, when a guy gets viewed a completely different way and even the questions that are asked sometimes. I think the fact that people are stepping up and calling those things out and bringing attention to them and really fighting to change it is something that makes it exciting for our future, knowing that we're still working towards that. And with us, like you said, all having a responsibility to keep making sure that happens. Well, I think for us, and I won't speak for everyone, but for myself, like I wanted to be viewed as a, ba- a basketball player, not a female basketball mm-hmm. player, or just as women's basketball. Like the last time I checked, we you know we play with a ball and a hoop and the court are the same dimensions. Um, now we play below the rim, and there are things that are different about the game. But I think for for us, if we didn't look at it as players and athletes and and view ourselves differently because. You know, my student athletes put in 20 hours a week or more, right. you know, compliance wise, you know, <laughs> more on their part. But, you know, they're doing the same things. They're getting up early. They're doing those right. things. They're lifting. They're, you know, being great representatives on our campus academically and doing all those things. That's no different. You know, they may be displayed in a different way, but we don't, we didn't view ourselves as uh, we're playing women's basketball. I, I think there's probably a perception. There is a perception across the country of, our sports are played differently, yes, but it's still our our athletes are putting in the same amount of time or more. We have to, as leaders, make sure that they understand we didn't just have this opportunity. You don't just have this opportunity. They take advantage of it mm-hmm. and not take it for granted. But you know, we just want to be viewed as athletes mm-hmm. and not a female athlete or a male athlete. But we don't. I don't think we have to fight for that distinction or that that's that's not a big deal to us. We just wanted to play a sport and have that opportunity, and we, we did because of the people that came before us. I think, yeah, I completely agree. We talked about that in tennis, too, even more to the degree of comparing ourselves to women's basketball, where we're not tennis players, we're athletes. We're athletes just like every other team. You guys are the same value, you're working the same, your demands are the same. You're, got to perform in the classroom, you got to perform in court. Mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, the more we can promote that idea that you are an athlete and that's it, I think that's good for the self-esteem on every, for everyone. And I think that the more people that can buy into that idea outside the programs too, it's just going to push that forward in a good way. Oh, really, it's been a great experience for me to sit here and listen to these three because it shows the progress that we've made. Mm-hmm. And yet, like they've all said, there's there's more progress mm-hmm. to be made. But it shows the steps that have been taken. And, and this is um, the opportunities that they had and that their student athletes now have is what, what we fought for. So kind of on that note of progress, now that you've come back and you get to coach at the place where you played, have you seen progress in that from then to now? I think so. I think when when I came to Louisiana Tech in 1998, which is a long time ago at, at this point, but the program had already been established so well. And I think you look back to people like Sanja Hogue and ultimately Dr. Taylor, who made it a priority for women's basketball and women's athletics to be successful. And there weren't a lot of schools across the country that were willing to do that at that point. And it took a group of women to go to Dr. Uh, Taylor and say, you know, this is what we want to do. And that he got on board with that and pushed that forward. And I think that he was a champion for that on our campus. And then you bring in Coach Barmore and, and, you know, being from a male, like he is a great champion for women and women's opportunities. And for us as student athletes, And so I think those people laid the groundwork for where we are today and that it was important to our administration. It was important to um, other people um, in the community and the region and the state. And I think that, you know, was hard for us because we didn't always see that because it always wasn't that way when we got here. And I think our program in general has had a lot of 
um, and re has reaped a lot of benefits for that. And then I think the, the winning and the championships and all of that just really magnified the importance of those opportunities for those women um, to play here at Louisiana Tech. And coming back, I see changes in facilities and, and upgrades to certain things that allow our students to be successful. Mm -hmm. And whether it be from academic support to, you know, the weight room and just all those things that maybe we didn't have when I played, you know, we would go over to the field house and lift at, you know, and I can remember doing that and um, early morning workouts that, you know, we were in there with a lot of, you know, male athletes and it was great camaraderie for us. We didn't look at it as, you know, anything other than we were going to work out. But now, you know, we, when you have your own space and, you know, just things like that, I think that we've seen great progress in that. But I think too, it, it helps when you've got someone of Mary Kay's stature that's within the administration is able mm -hmm. to share those things and the battles that they faced and there's still a drive to push things forward and make it even better and not be satisfied and content with where we are. I won't keep that too much longer. Um, my last question is what advice would you have for young women who are looking to get into this at like this sports industry, whether that's coaching or in and some other in administration in some form? What advice would I have? Uh, go for it. Like we were saying, this is a great time to do that. I think we need more women in coaching. We need more women in athletic administration. It's it's much better, but it's still very heavily male influenced. Um, especially like sports like tennis, where there might be only one team on campus, not a men's and women's team. Um, it's great to have more women coaches and I see that now like every year when some people are retiring and they're hiring new people, new young coaches, the majority of them seem to be women now and that's, mm -hmm. like we were saying before, that's so special to play for a woman coach and it's not an opportunity that a lot of us had and just to be able to play for someone that you know is, knows exactly what you're going through and can be a direct role model for you. You can do whatever you want. You can have whatever you want. You know, you just have to put your priorities and work hard and you can see that this is being done at every level. Um, you know, one great example that we didn't mention before when we were talking about role models, um, Serena Williams. I know she's kind of controversial for some people, but I mean, she's doing things that, I mean, you can't prove that a man can't do it, but coming right. back after having right. a baby and still being a top athlete in the world, top of the game, I mean, that's amazing. Like mm -hmm. women can do amazing things, so they should just go for it. Absolutely. I think one word that comes to mind for me is compete, and mm -hmm. I think that that's a um, sometimes can be looked at as a negative term, but it's something that we as athletes um, do every single day. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you enter um, the sporting realm from a professional standpoint, it's going to be the same way. And I think that. That's male or female, but I think it's something that's constant of you've got to continue to compete, mm -hmm. whether it's being your best that day or impacting others around you or teaching, le trying to teach lessons of life, of time management and being a part of something bigger than yourself or just, you know, showing up and doing a great job. I think those are all extremely important. And for us, um, you know, I would just continue to encourage people to not be satisfied and settle, but don't let anyone tell you that you're not capable of doing something mm -hmm. um, because that's where you know we sell ourselves short and not only ourselves, but the people that we could possibly mm -hmm. impact in the future. And I think there are a lot of tremendous um, young women out there today that have the ability to do that and you don't want them to not take that opportunity because they're afraid or they've been told I don't think you can do that because I think that that's what happens a lot and mm -hmm. women don't coach and I've had friends that have gotten out of it because they wanted to have a family and you know I, I, everybody has their own you know way of going about things but I, I, I see a lot of good coaches get out of it or good administrators or um, sports um, management professors or people within the profession that get out of it because they want to have a family or do other things and that's great but I think there's still so many opportunities for you to do that mm -hmm. you just it's it's a chore and it's a lot of balance but you, you want them to compete and I think that that's something that we all grew up doing and it's a natural uh, characteristic for us I think for me just 
thinking, which I never, you know, I coaching I didn't think was exactly what I would do. I knew I wanted to stay in college athletics. I knew I, would, I couldn't imagine once my volleyball career, playing career ended just being out of sport. I had been a part of it for so long. But whatever you choose to do, whether it's coaching or athletic administration or just something, you know, involved with sports, even if it's helping out with little league teams or whatever, players who go into that will just see how rewarding it can be. Just the experience of even being a student athlete, going through the challenges that you go through, um, overcoming the adversity, you know, just all of the things that it, time management, you know, all the things that it really challenges you to do and requires of you. Those are great life skills, and those are things that we talk to our players all the time that are going to help you not just during your time here as a student athlete. We're frequently relating different scenarios they're going through here with us and trying to get them to understand how their response now might dictate how they respond in the future when they are a mother, when they're a wife, when they're an employee at their job, and just really getting them to understand. I think you hear all the time organizations, a lot of them are looking for student athletes, you know, former student athletes to hire because they know you've learned how to balance your time. You've learned how to um, be pushed, you know, by a coach and motivated. And uh, those are, there's just so many characteristics that I think being a part of the sport, of any sport can help bring to you in life that if you, you know, there are tons of girls that picked up a ball and never looked back and now it is helping them in all phases of their life. So Amanda said, go for it. I think probably uh, there's the majority of parents now um, were able to to compete when they were growing up. So mm-hmm. they're encouraging mm-hmm. their, their daughters to participate because they know that being on a team is going to eventually make you not only a better person, a better parent, a better uh, employee, and, and probably the boss someday, mm-hmm. and uh, I think they see the advantage of, of their uh, their daughters playing, and they're, they're encouraging that way, and I think that's made a big difference. Well, y'all are all doing a great job continuing the legacies that were set for you, and I'm sure y'all will, so thank you um, for y'all's time today. Thank, thank you. Thanks for having us.